We are lucky enough to be invited to Red Bull Racing F1 headquarters to have a chat with Al Peasland and Rob Marshall, two men who've been behind the scenes of one of the most successful F1 teams of recent years. We'll chat to them about how aero design works within Red Bull. Designs really start on Adrian Newey's drawing board. Uh, it's quite unique in the sport of Formula One. In such a high-tech world, we still use a traditional drawing board for a lot of the initial designs. Uh, Adrian Newey's designs would then be converted into a virtual 3D model. Um, we take them into two areas then. One area is to manufacture and test a wind tunnel model car, which is a 60% scaled car. And the other area is to use what we call CFD, which is effectively a virtual wind tunnel. Aero is very important. It's probably the, the single most important factor in whether your car is going to be a success or not. In order to get the car to go quickly, you have to make it go quickly in a straight line and fast around the corners. In order to go quickly in a straight line, engine power is obviously very important, but obviously having a car with low drag is equally important. And then when it comes to going around the corners, you need to stop the car sliding off the side of the track. And that's where the downforce comes in. The car itself is roughly, give or take, 7,000 unique designs go into making a Formula One car. But from the very first race, even before that, we're, we're adding new updates, what we call race updates, which are improvements that could be from something as large as a new front wing for a given circuit, right down to very tiny uh, design changes in and around the car. And that's continuous. That literally is new updates every race partly to tailor the car to the circuit that we're, we're going to for that event, but also to add general performance improvement on the car, generally make the car faster or more reliable. It's very much a development race. Uh, the cars on track at you know each, every 19 races of the year are really the end result of a huge amount of development work that's gone on behind the scenes. And it's really how quickly we can do that development work that makes the difference to the success on track. Obviously, when the FIA prescribe a regulation change, say to make the front wing smaller, uh, that requires an awful lot of R&D work. It is a, a bit of a frustration when it first comes along because you think you've done a good job on the old one, but then again, it's an opportunity to do a good job on the new one as well. Um, and it's not just confined to the detail of that front wing because everything that hits the front wing, all the air that flows over it, washes over the rest of the car. So you don't just change the front wing when there's a front wing change, you have to change many other bits as well. I've been really fortunate to have been in this sport for quite a long time now and with this team for about eight years and, and obviously we've seen lots of regulations change over the years. Regulations can even change during a season uh, and I think that the beauty with the pace of Formula One is that we simply don't have the time to be frustrated or complain about rule changes because that's time wasted in, in coming up with the solution. So we see new regulations purely as a challenge and as an engineer at heart a challenge for me is great, that's what we do, we're problem solvers. Well there's all sorts of people really, I, I mean most people have, have got a kind of uh, aerodynamics or a mechanical engineering degree, but that's not always the case, there's a few people that have come through with um, apprenticeships and HNDs and they work their way through, um, up through engineering and have kind of learnt from a grassroots level, so there's all kinds really. This car is a priceless work of art. Um, as an engineer myself, I'm an engineer and to be able to work on areas of the car or work with an engineering team but then see your product on the TV at the weekend being driven by very famous athletes and supported by people who are very famous on TV and in the sport that's a, that's a great thing to be part of ultimately this is really more of a hobby and a passion than it is work